Hi, I'm Fahim, co-founder of Educative. In this video, I'll walk through how to answer three of the most common system design interview questions, which are design Twitter, design Uber, and design Spotify. Let's jump right in. A typical system design interview question that's very frequently asked is how to design Twitter. I think you know what Twitter is, so let's dive a little deeper into how would you design Twitter in an interview setting. You've already looked at the high-level design, or if you've not looked at the boilerplate, first go and look at the boilerplate design that we've already described, and then let's leverage that boilerplate design to come up with this, the basic solution or the basic uh, scaffolding of the solution, and then in the detailed design phase, Try to understand what are the unique requirements of Twitter. And the most important thing that the Twitter users care about is how to generate a timeline or a news feed. Now, generating news feed requires a lot of different components to work together. One of them is the ad mixer, which looks at your profile, which looks at all the ads that are available in the ad inventory and then comes up with the top three, four, five ads that might be relevant to the user. So based on those ads, they're ranked, and you're going to see some of those ads in your timeline. Next, and the most important thing is the tweets. So again, there's a tweet ranker that would go and look at all the tweets. It would rank all the tweets based on who you follow, based on who you, who you're, who you follow, and they have been retweeted all of those different things, and the ranker would come up with an algorithm to rank all those tweets and then suggest the top 20, 30, 40, 50 tweets that will be shown on your timeline. Similarly, people who you may want to follow will go through the same process. All of these different things will be leveraged in a component called Timeline Mixer. And once Ad Mixer has given its input, the tweet Timeline Mixer has given its input, uh, the uh, user or who to follow has, it has given its input, all of these things will be combined to come up with a timeline experience for each user. And that would happen multiple times every minute for many users. In Twitter's case, it may happen for millions of users every minute. And that is what you're trying to solve for in the distributed design, that, in the detailed distributed design. One great question that's asked frequently in system design interviews is designing Uber. In the detailed design, we have to understand what is the key value prop that Uber is providing to its customers. And that would guide us on how to configure these building blocks to come up with a solution that would suffice all the requirements. And if you think about it, the most important thing and the critical thing in designing Uber is how to efficiently match a rider to a driver. Riders are mostly static. They're like maybe fidgeting or walking around a little bit, but they are like mostly in one place, but the drivers are typically moving. So when a rider requests a ride, Uber has to quickly come up with a list of candidate drivers that are nearby. And how do you do that efficiently? How do you figure out where the driver is at? How do you figure out where the rider is at? How do you figure out, are those coordinates close enough? And then how do you figure out, okay, who are the top three or four closest drivers? And then send them the request as soon as they accept the match has been made. And then you have to use a trip manager to like make sure that the trip is successful. First of all, if you think about it, the problem is very different if you are in a very congested place or you are in a more suburban area or a rural area where there is not a lot of traffic and there is not a whole lot of people. If you are in downtown Manhattan, the problem becomes really complicated because each block might have multiple riders and each block might have multiple drivers. On the other hand, if you are in a suburban area, then if you're requesting a ride, you may only have a handful of riders nearby, 
and also you may also have a few drivers nearby. So in some cases, you are trying to match a rider to a driver that is most likely a few hundred feet away. On the other hand, you're probably looking or scanning an area of like miles, in some cases tens of miles. For example, if someone lives in a uh, rural area and they're looking for a ride to the airport, which would probably take an hour, you're looking for like, you know, you're searching in a radius of maybe 20, 30, 40 miles. So the problem is very interesting and uh, complicated. Now, the way Uber solves this problem is, and this is part of the, this is part of the detailed design, is that they chunk each area into a unique set of coordinates. Or, for example, maybe their first chunking is on zip codes. So they can say, if you're in the same zip code, you're potentially in the same area. It solves the problem of uh, areas where there, is, there are sparse riders and sparse drivers. It really doesn't solve the problem of downtown Manhattan, where there is like literally hundreds of drivers and riders in the same zip code. Then you would have to use more sophisticated algorithms to find the nearest rider and the nearest driver uh, based on other information that you have. You may have to look at their exact geo coordinates. And the problem is that the driver coordinates are most likely changing every 10 seconds, every 20 seconds. The, the driver might be moving away from the rider. The driver might be moving towards the rider. So they are changing. So there is definitely some heuristics that you have to come up with to take a snapshot of where the driver is at, where the rider is at, and then come up with the algorithm and say, OK, this is the closest driver. Let's send them a notification if they accept. And that's why the acceptance has to be within 30 seconds, 40 seconds. If they accept, then the match has been made. If they did, do not accept, then you have to find the next closest match and then send them the request. And that process might take a while. That's why you experience that sometimes you're matched with a driver immediately versus sometimes it takes a couple of minutes. And that's the most interesting part and the most critical part in the detailed design of designing Uber as a system design interview. One very common system design interview question is how to stream music. And this comes in various varieties. Somebody might say design Spotify. Somebody might say, say design Apple Music. But what all of them are asking is, how do we quickly stream music? And the most important problem in case of Spotify is how to start streaming and playing music immediately as soon as the customer has clicked the play button. Because imagine, if you've clicked the play button and the music is taking like 15, 20 seconds to play, you, you will probably like turn off the app and you'll go somewhere else. Maybe turn on the radio if you're in the car. So you want to play music as soon as possible. Now the problem is that if you're on a slower internet connection, example, for example, you're in the car, you're driving, typical 3G speeds, you would be able to download a five megabyte song in about eight to 10 seconds. But that's eight to 10 seconds too long. The user wanted to hear the music immediately, not after 10 seconds. So the goal is to play, start playing the music in about 200 milliseconds. And that's the problem that we're going to focus on in Spotify. Now we've already figured out that we can't download the whole song. So the solution has to, of course, rely on some kind of caching, but also to like how to effectively use this caching to chunk the song into smaller parts so you can download the first few kilobytes or few hundred kil kilobytes of the music as fast as you can and then start playing it. And while you're playing that first chunk, you are quickly trying to download the next chunks. So the server is supporting this download, this fragmented download, and then you are like downloading the song on the device and then you're playing it from the device. And that's how the user will get a almost instantaneous experience. Now, your users might be in different geolocations as well. So even downloading a few hundred kilobytes might take a lot of time. For example, if your servers are in USA, 
and your user is in Singapore or Japan, it might take a lot of time. So now, in addition to this chunking and downloading the first few hundred kilobytes, you also have to rely on CDNs. So you're going to push a lot of songs to the CDN, but you're storing 50 million songs. You probably don't want to stream or store 50 million songs on a CDN. It's going to get very expensive very quickly. Well, 80-20 rule. Most of the people in a certain region, 80% of them are listening to 20% of the songs. That's your cue. That's your hint of what to store on a CDN, because that's, those are the songs that are most frequently accessed. And then for the long tail, it might take a little longer. Even with, well, even with the, the, that long tail, chunking will allow you to stream the music as, as soon as possible. Also, when you're playing a playlist, you can start buffering songs. You can start downloading the next songs in the playlist. Uh, it also helps with uh, frequent disconnections, especially when a person is driving in a congested area or where, where the cell phone service is uh, not optimal. Combining all of these things together, from chunking the song to pushing the most frequently listened songs to the CDNs to buffering the next songs in the playlist, provides a very seamless experience to the listener, even if they are quickly flipping through a playlist and clicking next and next because they're not liking the current song that is being played. And that's how you design Spotify. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about system design and interview prep, come visit us at educative.io.